This is Hammond. And Jessica. And you're listening to the Friendly Atheist Podcast. If you like what you're listening to, which you will, go to <laughs> patreon.com slash friendly atheist podcast. And we have a bunch of people we want to thank. They're new uh, subscribers, Patreon supporters over the past month. Carmen mm-hmm. C, literally, ha ha ha. Cat H, Scott D. <laughs> Ka- Kaya H, Brett G, Johnson H, Melvin G, Jennifer W, Andy A, Jenny R, Elizabeth D, Joseph D, and Leslie M. Leslie M, just quick heads up, is my literal best friend from college who was on a the first uh, bonus episode of this show that's also in our regular feed. So you're saying um, it took her six years to get around. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. And this is why I wanted to make sure we brought her up is that um, Leslie and her boyfriend, Jeff live in Louisville. And we have both on the same time been rewatching lust. Yeah. Um, and so not only can you hear Leslie, when we do a fun, uh, probably two hour chat about uh, Roxanne Gay's bad feminist, which was a delight. She was up here a couple of years ago. Um, on oof, probably Wednesday or so, uh, Jeff, Leslie, myself, and my husband Mikey did a four part, a four person episode, bonus episode about the second season of Lost, and it was Hemant Reader. It was three hours long, Jesus. and here's the fucked up part: is what that are you, Ed- Joe Rogan? I- Honestly, I see how he does it. I just have a lot of shit to say. But here's the real fun part. Did you sell crappy men's pills while you were doing it? No, I sold a silver thing that you Uh drink and it turns you Uh blue. Do you think that's good? (laughs) But the fucked up thing, though, is that we ended at like probably 1130 our time. They're on Eastern time. Mikey went to bed and I brought my laptop over to... (laughs) to to the couch and Leslie and Jeff and I continue to talk oh my God. about last season two for an hour and a half. <laughs> you've never you've never seen that show, have you? I had seen it. Leslie oh, had never okay. seen it. Um Jeff, Mikey, and I had all seen it. It's been it's the perfect quarantine movie show to watch because it's trash, but there's twelve thousand <laughs> hours per oh, no, yeah. episode, per I'll, season. I, Do you remember in the aughts when shows were Good. Like hour long um, shows, twenty five episodes per season. Oh uh, yeah, it's simply too many. <laughs> I okay. I'll, I'll give you the first few seasons of Lost. They were good. We're in season three. I'm still enjoying it, and I'm concerned. It'll, yeah, you should be. Um, <laughs> it doesn't hold up great in the 2020 uh, uh, scope, but it really, truly, like that episode. If you just need like to hear people who like each other yell at each other for three hours. That's just sort of, we did a genuine five minute bit about, do you remember? No, you don't. There's just this one part when the regular people meet the others and they're like, we think there's more of us than there are of you. And the others guy goes, light them up. And they all like light up their torches Anyway, I don't remember it, but I know the gist of what you're talking we about. We did a 10 minute bit just goofing oh on that, and it's the hardest I've ever. Mikey, hem it, hem it. This, this is why you don't happened. record anything late at night because giggle fits. <laughs> <show up. laughs> Mikey said something, it made me laugh so hard. I did a full on spit take. Like, oh I, God. I couldn't turn off the computer because I had spit onto the computer and it was a touch screen. That's where my life is now. That's what we're doing. Anyway, I'm going to so give you my you kids. Would, I'm going to give you my kids so I can I experience some of that joy. I would love them very much. I think they would like Dottie. I'll give you um, two hours I need and my you will change your mind. be entertained by literally anything. <laughs> She's well, crawling up on me now. Oh She's 75 God. pounds. It's irresponsible. Okay, let's talk All about right. news. Let's talk about news. Liberty University. Let me ask you this. Yes. No, I don't. You. This whole show is about our usual <laughs> go tos, but I, wait. This, can you just tell me right now? Are we uh-huh. going to talk about uh, our hands attendance figures? Oh, I have the numbers right. No, you do not, not. You no. mother. Okay, it's not a no. Listen, Liberty University has a philosophy department, as do all colleges. Right? They're getting rid of it. Yes. They're getting rid of the whole thing. Philosophy is done at Liberty University. They is that just the same thing as religion. 
Uh, they have a divinity uh, program. They do have their separate, like, Christian, Christian program, whatever you want to call it. But the philosophy department and, like, the six, five or six professors who work in it, if they're not already teaching elsewhere on the campus, just gone. They all got a letter saying, like, bye. You might get some sort of, not a severance, but something similar to that. Is it related to COVID or is it no. just, they were like, Y'all are talking about Greeks too much, and they didn't have Jesus back so in Greek times. That's what I want to say. But here's the deal: like it, their argument, Liberty's argument that they have now made since the backlash of like you're getting rid of the entire philosophy department. Like I get, I kind of would understand that at a school where they have no money. But this is Liberty; it's a private school. You can do whatever you want, and you have a yeah. giant endowment. So what are you doing? It has nothing to do with COVID. Their argument is, well, there's only like a handful, literal handful of people who majored in it. And it's just there's no reason to keep it around because we just never got a lot of students interested, which might make sense, except that tracks. except there's a lot of a school. I mean, any major college everywhere has majors that not a lot of students take. But a lot of students, like you just said, you said you took a philosophy class mm-hmm. in college. That's what I a mean, lot I was of students a major, do. So I was taking all kinds of useless shit. Sure, but that's the point. Like every student might take one or two classes in subject areas that are not their major, right? So, like, yeah, I took an English class. I didn't major in English. <laughs> like such a talented writer now. Yeah. That's I learned how to read like we <laughs> all have those classes. But what they're saying is, you know what? No one needs to know about critical thinking or logic or how other people used to think. Okay. None of that is valuable here. Damn it. That's what I'm taking away from that. Here's my takeaway from it, which is a little different, is that. <sighs> oh, this is I, I, too. I just realized this. The professor, the professor who broke the news that said, well, I've just been laid off because they just axed the whole department. He just uh, deleted that post. <gasps> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but what I was going to say is I feel like people who go to, and, and this is really maybe doing sweeping, sweeping generalization, so, so take it for what it's worth. But I feel like if you're going to a Liberty University, you're probably going to you're you're going there because you want a pretty specifically Christian focused education, yeah. and I don't think philosophy works in that. I mean, no, I, see, I totally would. disagree with you because if you're majoring, if you're doing any of those ministry related, pastor, all no, that's exactly here. that's mm-hmm. exactly when they take philosophy because all that's of when those they should take philosophy. They do. But and any pretty- if you go to Wheaton, if you go to any of those other Christian schools, like mm-hmm. they're studying the Bible and they're saying like, look, this is what the Bible says. These are what other philosophies. No, no, no. But they all take those classes too at other schools. Like, especially if you're doing theology or you're doing any sort of ministry thing, philosophy is a general part of that curriculum. If you're ever doing that anywhere else. So like the response that I've seen from other Christians has been like, how can you get rid of this? It would make more sense, honestly, for them to get rid of biology. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> but not philosophy. And by the way, this is how f- uh, the school describes the philosophy department on their website. They're talking about the degree, but it goes to the whole department. The philosophy degree at Liberty develops the whole person and will prepare you for a lifetime of problem solving and critical thinking. Oh, and that- they're getting rid of of course, okay, they're getting so rid like of that. ask and fucking answer. Like <laughs> the thing, <laughs> it's not as if they are going to a Christian school to. It, it, You're saying they're going I, I to Liberty. Of course, they're going to be brainwashed into doing well, this. Well, yeah, and, Liberty's and whole brain- shit is we no 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 you guys are misinterpreting us we don't brainwash them we offer the full curriculum and they're literally getting rid of the curriculum. No, of course. It's just to me like that completely they tracks even... with what they what their goal is. Yeah, their they can't even keep up the rules. Yeah, right. Their goal is not to turn out well rounded students who have a really strong understanding of whatever world religions and, yeah. and great philosophers. Their goal is to turn out people who are going to reiterate the story of Christ and I mean, frankly, learning what like a platonic ideal is just gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, it's just there. It's 
they should offer it if for no other reason than it helps them counter that claim. And they're not even doing that. By the way, a year ago, yeah, a year ago, they got rid of a dozen members of their school of divinity, which of all things you would think they would keep around. That was last year. And now they're just slowly kind of cutting away all the stuff that's not what Jerry Falwell Jr. wants. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Is it a is it a budget thing or is it what's the school of divinity? Is it not what I think it is? Uh, it's not the Harry Potter type of divinity school, if that's what you're I mean, thinking. No, but it's that was the school of divinity, like their whole fucking jam. Yeah. Like they're, they, they're not pastors, so why did they cut it out? They they just... Not math, they don't I, do that one, I don't remember what the argument was for firing a dozen members, but at least they... That wasn't the whole department. They kept around some people, but they got rid of a dozen of them. This time, they just cut the entire philosophy department. And one of the guys, uh, Habermas, who's in there, is a well-known Christian apologist, but I guess he also teaches in another part of the the school, maybe in the School of Divinity. So he's just shifting over there. But like their most famous guy, they're basically saying, nope, we don't need you to teach in critical thinking anymore. Um, The weird thing is we talked about this earlier. Liberty just opened up a right wing think tank, quote unquote, <laughs> on campus with Charlie Kirk, the right wing dude. Oh, like um... they opened that up this year. They they're not struggling for money. They have the money if they I don't want. believe they're struggling for money. I think they're trying to focus down on what their what their mission is. And what their mission is is make sure people are brainwashed and don't Hear about? I mean, it, I, I don't know. This completely tracks with what I understand by you, yeah. uh, about about that. Of like, it, don't learn about Muslims. Don't learn about ancient Greeks. Don't learn about anything that's not what Jerry Falwell says. This completely tracks. They're gonna burn the library next. I'm calling it now. At some I mean, there's point, there's something valuable in there. Yeah. They're gonna have like a bunch of old editions of zoo books, and they're gonna burn it down and put another shooting range there. Like fucking. They Fine, have a shooting range. They have a. I think they I also know, have a. Ski, I said don't they, don't they have a ski uh, resort on campus? I'm too? sorry. Do you think remember. I would know that over you, Hammond? You Just should. because I'm a white person who's you know ski resort. Um, <laughs> this is this is a weird. Uh, here we'll move on to a different story. Jim Baker got in trouble for the past month because he was selling that silver solution. <laughs> That's okay. I'll give you another Christian in a okay. second. He Thank was you. selling silver solution and he got in trouble and he was sued because a guest on his show said it could cure COVID and no one pushed back. And one of the reactions I heard from the Christian world is, yeah, but it's Jim Baker. He's a fringe. Like no one takes Jim Baker seriously. Except unless they're all like the people who take Jim yeah, Baker seriously. Exactly. Well, here's a story that was broken uh, by Religion News Service by Jack Jenkins of Religion News Service. There is another Christian, a guy I've heard of, like popular in evangelical circles named Gabe Lyons. And he's well known because he's written books about uh, what's happening in the evangelical world. He wrote a book, uh, I think co-authored a book called Unchristian, which was a big deal years ago, all about why so many young people were leaving organized Christianity. And he was trying to explain to Christians, this is why they're leaving. And like, that's what they wanted to hear. Like, you should listen to our podcast more. We have some thoughts. Right. Uh, he's well known. He also, him and his wife created like the Christian version of Ted talks. Yeah. Cause you, every time something gets popular in the mainstream, Christians have to copy you it. You need like, to have a work. Christian pill off of it. Yeah. You have so to. He organizes that conference. My point is like, this guy has a strong reputation. He's well known in evangelical circles. You can't write him off as a fringe dude. And here's the story that was broken this week. Him and his wife have a podcast, and they recently brought on uh, this guy named Joshua Axe, who is a chiropractor and nutritionist. And Uh he said on the show that essential oils, like the kind uh, he sells on his website, can defeat COVID. And what was the reaction from Gabe Lyons? Nothing. Cool, sounds fine. great. They didn't say anything I'm about it. I'm going to shove that shit up my ass, and that's <laughs> how I'm going to cure COVID. Yeah, this is from the article. In the podcast conversation, Axe downplayed the threat of the novel coronavirus by claiming, we've actually had worse threats in the past, dot, dot, dot. Um, but he had confidence he could either avoid infection or defeat it in a few days by boosting his immune system through alternative methods, such as ingesting ginger tea and oregano oil. Now, 
I should say oregano oil. Ginger yeah. tea and oregano yeah. oil. This was taped in late February. So maybe you say. Okay. Yeah. Like it okay. was before all the lockdowns happened. So sure. maybe you say we didn't know enough. But like, no, we knew enough to know that oregano oil does not cure COVID. There is no cure for COVID or anything like that. And again, this is what Jim Baker did that he got in trouble for, right? Like he promoted this BS on his show. He didn't call it out, even though a guest said it. Well, that's exactly what this popular Christian is doing. And so now what? Who's going to back away from this guy? Who's going to back away from his conferences or anything like that? Will anything happen? That's the question. Like, well, we don't know. Happen? So this just happened. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, the story I, came out now. He, I mean, there has been some pushback online from some people who heard it, like when it first aired, but it really didn't take on any life until this week. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't. Oh, by the way, I should add uh, that the TED Christian TED conference. It's called the Q conference. No relation to the conspiracy theory. They had a virtual conference because they couldn't do it in person this year. And that virtual conference took place in late April, so like recently, and they also invited this guy to speak, Joshua Axe, and during his virtual talk, he also promoted the same unreliable, unscientific BS to the audience. So like, it's not like he did it in February and then quickly realized, well, that was a stupid thing to say. No, he did it like weeks ago. So frustrating. I don't know, like this has been... This has been such a wild time and it's really shown a light on people who somehow both mistrust professionals and implicitly trust deeply non-professional people. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's so. And one I mean, of the points I try to make, we point out Ken Ham's problems or uh, uh, Jim Baker's problems and it, and Westboro Baptist Church. And it's always the criticism that we might get from that is you're picking the lowest hanging fruit. And the argument I always want to push back on is these guys are not all on the fringes, even if some of their actions might be. These are mainstream ideas here well, within like certain saying Christians. Picking on Trump is lowest hanging fruit. Like, right. oh, he's the fucking president. If he is a literal idiot in public, like, yeah, like it's our absolute right to say, no, you're an idiot and I'm going to call you that. And while we're on that subject, just case in point, like what when we talk about the fringes, here's the question uh, from a recent survey. I can't who's uh, the survey is from the Pew Research Center. I can't remember. I'll look for that. But the question is, which of these sources do you rely on most for news Uh about the coronavirus outbreak? Here's Uh what most people said, like 58 percent said they get their news from national news media. So TV shows, network news. Uh, the cable news. Okay. Um, 53% said public uh, health. So uh, the scientists, the epidemiologists, the Fauci. But the problem is it's all filtered through other sources, right? Yeah. They also get it from local local news, 47%. uh, 36% said their governor. And 26%, this is general public, said Trump. So those are kind of like where people are getting their news from. White evangelicals. Oh, Christ. Specifically, where are they getting their news about coronavirus from? Again, white evangelicals, not creepy, cringy white evangelicals, just all of them. 51 Wait, are you saying they're not all creepy, cringy? Uh, Not just the one, not just the low hanging fruits. These are like the ones who regularly go to megachurches, your neighbors, people like that. You know what I mean? 52% said, and this is their number one person, they get it from Trump. More than anywhere else, they get their news about coronavirus from Trump, which is just like, how many times does that guy have to lie to you for these people to go back and say, well, he's being honest about the virus. I trust him when it comes to that. Like, how lack of critical thinking must you have? I I really, truly, I do not understand how, I don't understand how people are still invested in him unless it is just throwing good money after bad, right? Like... (sighs) What, they, when, or, when I mean, he this said, isn't even a I like Trump because he gives me the judges I want. This is no, this, has nothing so to do with that. that. We're so far beyond that. Because at this point, any Republican who is is still supporting Trump, if they say that they are pro-life, I will shove them off a fucking cliff personally. Because human beings are dying. 
And that's only because of COVID. We have seen for years and years and years that human beings are dying because of lack of medical care, uh, because of food deserts, because of a gajillion different reasons. And now they're literally like, well, X amount of people are going to have to die for us to get back to work. Whereas for the last hundred years, women have been like, well, nothing has to die, but I would rather not be pregnant if I am to be a productive member of society. And they're like, this would never be worth it. It is never worth human life to to boost the economy. How fucking dare you, you bitch. And now people are like, oh, are they, ooh, are they 61 believe, years old? Cool. Yeah, I believe the number yeah. today was uh, if we can get 120,000 people dead, then we should congratulate ourselves for the low body count. That was from Lindsey Graham. Uh, okay, this is, I know this is, I remember being 16 years old in my English class when 9-11 happened. And it was a moment that I will, I will never forget that entire day. My, my photography teacher, who was, I was in second period English when I heard about it, third period I had photography, until photographer never took, but he snuck in a TV so we could watch what was happening. And 3000 people died that day. And it changed everything. It changed every part of our lives. And I was 16 and I will remember every fucking moment. And we're at what, 2,500 people a day dying? Uh, something like that, I'm sure. A day. And somehow the Republicans are managing to underplay this in a way that is like, mm, some people have to die for you to get your hair cut. I guess that's okay. Like, Here's a it, deep disturbing thought I've had about that, which is I'm kind of glad in a sense, in a weird demented sense that Hillary Clinton is not president because if oh. like two people died of coronavirus, it would, she would be impeached by now. I, mean, I think about that all the time. I genuinely think about that all the time of like, like how much shit would they blame I on her? Obviously am, everything? am grieving over the Trump presidency and, and the many people who have died because of it. But I cannot help think of like how in a very selfish personal sense, like if Hillary Clinton were president right now and first of all, this many people wouldn't have died because she would have right. like talked to scientists like at least one. But that's the point. It would have been much lower, but it would have been bigger than But they than would zero. have like fucking and... brought her to a wick. They would have burnt her at the stake. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I just... <sighs> And these Christians would still be like, well, I can't trust what's coming out of her mouth because, you know, 10 people died. Well, she, it, her mouth is attached to her uterus. And you know yeah. you can't listen to that shit. <laughs> oh, I didn't send you wine again, Hammond. You did not. And I now can, I'm drinking. Honestly, I have never met an adult couple who do not just have any wine in their house. I it's, have diet Pepsi. <laughs> It's too late. There's right. caffeine in that. You know oh, that. Oh, that's not going to stop me. I'm a wild man. <laughs> um, <laughs> you do drink. You do stay up until 4 a.m. and yeah. also drink like caffeinated pop hey, up until like midnight. And it is. It's 11:30 p.m. right now, and my children. they're sleeping right now. I get to party now for the next like three hours. Sorry, and I want to be very clear. When you say party, you mean uh, watch, watch Survivor and drink Diet Pepsi? Uh, no, I watch Survivor live. I'm a man. <laughs> it was the finale. It was good. Oh my god! So, we could not be more different. <laughs> when people say that, like all atheists are the same, they need to meet me in heaven because no two people <laughs> there have ever been more different. And I feel personally attacked when he doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that my abstinence helps you. The uh, okay. abstinence, it's too lazy to find wine. That too. Uh, in North Carolina this week, in Raleigh, the, the the white people were protesting to reopen everything, like they are in many cities. On and, behalf of white people, were yeah. nightmares. Your people were protesting to reopen everything, and so we we you know Todd Stiefel. He's a longtime donor for atheist uh, activists. He's donated a lot of money to a lot of groups. He lives in North Carolina. He's immunocompromised, so he's one of those people who would be oh, no. at risk. Uh, he's he's I don't he doesn't have COVID, but like he's the sort of person who could get it if you spread it. You know what yeah, I mean? And if you got it, it would be like it would be okay. bad. Yeah. And so he's trying to figure out, you know, how do you push back against the crazy people trying to open everything before it's 
uh, ready. And so one thing he did, trying to get attention away, because, you know, in every other state where they've had these protests, there's a lot of news media covering these stories. He was like, I want the cameras off of them and onto my sensible perspective. So what he did is he rented a plane to fly a banner overhead and it said fewer graves if we reopen in waves. And I think he wanted hashtag science saves, but it wouldn't fit or something on the banner. Oh, but the, funny, that the funniest thing about that is one of the news media, uh, one of the news channels video was videotaping the rally and stuff. And they saw people. It's 2020. Yeah. They're not using like they VHS fucking it. cassettes. To- uh, live streaming the rally. And they, they had a camera on a bunch of people who were saying like, yeah, let's reopen whatever the hair salons, let's reopen whatever. And then you see someone's like, look, there's a banner in the sky. And they all look up thinking it's going to say like reopen North Carolina. And they get very excited. And then someone reads what the banner says. And you (laughs) see them saying like, you guys, you guys, it's not about us. It's not for us. You guys look, okay, back to our thing. It was so funny. It's like um, Ross and Carrie from uh, Ross and Carrie, we, Carrie rented, did the same thing over a flat earth conference. Nice. And it was like Google round earth. <laughs> that yes. was equally good. Uh, Todd also added to the news media, like true American patriots sacrifice for the freedom of others. They would never sacrifice others to benefit themselves. I have- uh, he's going to try to do another banner soon, by the way. I have been writing a mental speech that relates victory gardens from World War II to not getting haircuts. And listen, I haven't perfected it yet. And when I do perfect it, it's going to go on like, what's happening in Naperville or whatever garbage um, thing I'm a Facebook group I'm on. Um, but <sighs> this has been a truly wild experience to see how little people are willing to sacrifice. Yeah, they can't stay home and watch TV. Got to go out. My my favorite clip from this week are the people who are like, you need to open the gyms and they're doing push-ups on the sidewalk. Yeah, and it's like, well, clearly you know how to do it outside the gym. You'll be okay. Sir, pick up something heavy and do a squat. Like, it's not... I understand it's not ideal. None of this shit is ideal, but, like, I don't know, like, what wouldn't I be willing to do to save a life or save 20 lives or 100 no. lives? Like, point to, like, Schindler's is- list, like, that guy gave up all this. Sh- he was like, "Why? if I sold my watch, that could have saved more lives. And these people, all you have to do is stay home and you are, you could save even more. No, must go do a squat. Like and there has people. to be something about how women during World War II used to draw lines up the back of their legs because they couldn't wear pantyhose anymore because the nylon was used for fucking parachutes or whatever. There has to be a, a line drawn from there to people being like, my roots are coming in. Can I buy a box of dye at Target? Yes. Do I want to? Absolutely not. It's the worst thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. I just, just read an interview today. Monsters. Uh, all the high school sports in Illinois are coordinated under one organization. And there was an interview with the guy who runs that organization. They were basically saying like, so all the spring sports have obviously been canceled. A lot of the summer stuff is gone too already. What's the fall mm-hmm. looking like? Because like football revenue, high school football revenue funds a lot of the other things that are going on. And they were basically saying like, look, I hate to do it. We'll try to work around it if we need to. But safety comes first. Like, it doesn't matter. We'll work around it. But we got to follow time the football science. players have ever said that. <laughs> yeah. And this guy was saying like, look, I love football. I want football. Not even as a uh, sports guy. He was just saying like, it's a good developing activity for the kids. I would hate to take it away from them. But we're going to follow what the science says and what's good for the public. And it's like, yeah, I mean, that's the sort of sacrifice. I'm just thinking like teenagers who just graduated and gave up whatever prom graduation all that stuff seniors who are like excited to be a senior in whatever sport thing they do and now they can't do that either and it's like those kids are giving up way more than the hair salon dying literally dying my hair sort of people who are like nope need that more than your life i just anyway it's 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 
2016 was hard to deal with because you sort of learned how many people were were comfortable with racism in the face of whatever they wanted, which was whatever conservative judges. I the last two months or three months or whatever, time is a flat circle, have for the first time in my entire life, I have genuinely thought like, do I need to leave this country? Like the people here are monsters like and, and not just the people in this country but like be and, and obviously nobody should trust like facebook or whatever to be the 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 bellwether of anything but just to see how many people are like all of you guys are so afraid to stay al- are trying so hard to stay alive that you're afraid to live and it's like no i i can stay at home for three or six months if it means that like my parents don't die and get a chance to meet my niece like right I, and, the, I, and again the people who are protesting they're not saying they want to get back to work they want you to get they, you know what i mean no, they want they everyone want, else to they get. want lower wage work and they want to go get their fucking nails done so it's not so they're saying that they need lower wage workers they're obviously never going to encourage that they get paid more but they need I listen, I have gone through ways where I've gotten manicures pretty consistently. Guess what's the easiest fucking thing to not do? Not get a manicure. Yeah. It will save you $25 or whatever. It's just, it's just people's selfishness and lack of empathy has hurt. Hurt, it feels dramatic, but just here's, here's a few stories me in a way. That same it, I was talking of- about being troubled. Yes, be troubled. Here's some no, stories about thing. people being troubled. There, in Illinois, there is a pastor named Christian Ionescu. He's a Romani. He escaped Romania, which was under a communist dictator at the time, and he came to outside of Chicago. And he's one of these people suing the state over the lockdown order, trying to get our uh, outside Chicago or like the south suburbs. Uh, Chicago is all I got. Oh, yeah, okay, but. He's suing to open back his church back up. But one of the things he said, oh, so first of all, I think he said to a reporter, uh, this is the same playbook the communists used, like the lockdown order in Illinois. It's un American, apparently. Uh, which Wait, is, when did the cost when did the communists use lockdown orders? Uh apparently all the time. Just to be clear, it was issued by a democratic leader. It's only in place for a few months. Like they're not anti-Christian communist leaders. They're saying like our lockdown order is a few weeks. It's for all public gatherings, not just churches. I don't have to justify that one. But here's the thing this pastor said that just cracked I laughed because the other option was crying. He <laughs> said Um, On his blog, where he was like, the government is coming after us. He said, we've been sentenced to death, not by a firing squad, not by lethal injection and not in an electric chair. It's more sinister. It's not by closing down the church. It's It's by keeping people away. Being entertained, which is the worst thing that's happened to anybody. Yeah. Like. And by the way, the judge, uh, I think this just happened today. I don't have it in front of me. The judge basically tossed out that lawsuit and he called this pastor selfish. Yes, yes, yes. There's there's a little bit of good news in that one. That's great. Um, Along the same lines, I wanted to talk about this because I don't think we've talked about it on this show yet, but I've heard this argument so many times. People complaining about why grocery stores are allowed to be open, but churches are not. And I thought that was one of those, oh, once you learn more about the virus, you won't make that stupid analogy again. And yet I saw it in Christianity sorry, today, this week. Adorable that you think that people will stop making that, that yeah, that's true. I didn't really think it would go away. Uh, but I was I was surprised by how many people it, uh, who should know better, don't know better. I'm not surprised this by that This is what either. I'm saying. This is what I'm seeing in my community um, of like, I thought you guys were not idiots. I didn't think you were smart. I just thought you weren't. <laughs> literal idiots but i just wanted to mention like just to be clear here's why they're not the same the argument they're making is if grocery stores are allowed to have as many people as they want in there but they take social yes, distancing true. guidelines which those stores all have in place and you got to wear masks the argument is well why can't our churches do that can i too? pause you for yeah, one second please. Um, this week i went to both home depot and lowe's to get uh some shit for my little patio garden yeah I had to wait in line because they were only allowing so many people 
in the store at a time. Like we all waited six feet apart, like basically yeah. across the fucking parking lot. And then she let X amount of people in at a time. So I'm going to say their premise is faulty. Heaven. <laughs> well, they were saying the grocery stores don't, they will let you in, but if you're waiting in line to check out, maybe you got to stand apart. But they were just saying, if you can let everyone in the grocery store, because it's essential. Yeah, they can't, they don't. Why not for us? But uh, they can't, they don't. Yeah. I'm so sorry. beyond that, though, like grocery stores aren't social gathering places. You're not there to talk to people. You're not there to linger. You're, I aggressively don't talk to people at the grocery store. Yeah, me neither. You get in, you get out. And at church, I mean, it's meant to be communal. You're supposed to talk. You're supposed to sit next to people. Even You're if they to eat things out of other people's hands. Yeah. yeah. And even if they say, no, we're separating families from each other. Like your family's here. The next one's several feet apart. Like it's church. You're seeing your friends. You're not going to keep that distance the whole time. If you say, and also with you, you have to shake people's hands. I think, yeah. I think that's the law. I mean, it's going to happen even if, because people are just used to doing that. So like, it's not the same. And by the way, they also made the same argument, slightly tougher argument, maybe where they're saying some liquor stores are open. So how come churches can't be open? And the same argument applies, which is, it, this is not necessarily a popular argument, but some people have addictions to alcohol. Some people just use it to de-stress. And if they don't have access to it, it's not just a, oh, I can't have what I want. It's their body will go through some shit to the point where they may have to go to a hospital and use up people who should be taking care of COVID patients. They might even need a ventilator. Like it is a health issue. I know that sounds weird to say, but that's no, the no, reason no. those I... places are open too. And sometimes uh, weed dispensaries for the same reason. So as somebody who's been to weed dispensaries since the shutdown happened, the, to me, the big difference between, and I buy whatever wine at, at the Target or the, the Meyer or a grocery shop. But Which I, don't I, have I brought... a big selection either, by the way. So sometimes you can't get what you need or they don't I sell mean, them the, at grocery stores. They they get me what I need. <laughs> but but my point is, like, for dispensaries, for, uh, specifically, uh, there is a, I think most places that you wait in line to buy a thing and then leave, it's pretty easy to make COVID friendly, right? Like, mm -hmm. I went to one in, in Addison, kind of by us, um, up 355, and I had to wait down the block six feet. It, it only took me 20 minutes total, but everybody was so spread out. It looked like there was a line going down the street. And then you go in and everybody has masks and you like get your shit. And like the, th the, the point is any place you buy shit that you're going in only to buy a thing and then leave is utterly, utterly different than I'm going to sit down in a chair and sit there for an hour and listen to somebody talk at me. Like those are two utterly different. I, I just don't understand. I understand people's um, fragility about being like, why are liquor stores and dispensaries open? I don't understand them not, not getting the difference between those two things and like what the process is of, of utilizing those things, if that makes sense. Like, I, I just think it's dumb. Also, I donated blood on, I think Tuesday. Hey, um, look, at you. look at for the first time almost ever. She um, did it right here, and she was new. She was in training. I don't have any bruising on my on, hey, on my hey. arm. I I usually look like I have like horrible tracks, but her name was Maria. She also had tattoos on her arm, so she was really comfortable working with with tattoos. <laughs> and needles, yeah, and needles, I guess. But she did such a good job, and it was she. Um, did my thing so she could take my blood. And I was like, oh my God, usually people take like five tries. And the woman behind her was like, oh, are you hard to stick? And I was like, yeah, completely. Turns out this woman who was helping me was in training and did better than any like professional nurse I've ever had. Anyway, you that guys, awesome. give and I did it in a church, like a real brave girl in the Calgary church, you know, down 59 from me, kind of. Uh huh. The one That's where they where it was. Had there's a gym in that church. What do we need a gym for in the church? Basketball for anyway. Jesus. Basically, anyway, I don't have blood. You can't even see bruising on me. I'm very proud of myself. Yay! <laughs> there. Anyway, um, uh, you're gonna enjoy this one. There's one more lady in Wisconsin where they had the Supreme Court basically say in the state, "Yeah, no lockdown order. It's illegal." 
Um, but one lady had Which filed a lawsuit. A fucking shit show for the last two it weeks. It really My has. My folks live out there. It's been a mess. There's a Go hairstylist. Ahead. She owns a salon. Her name is Jessica Netzel. And she has a store. And I'm, you're going to laugh your ass off. The, the salon is called. Yep. Okay. Swallow good. Kingdom Cuts. And she says it with K. <laughs> with K's. Kingdom Cuts. Uh huh. And Can we all decide that we're not going to substitute C's for K's? Like, I think we've all made a choice as a species that, like, yeah. that's not okay. She said that's she filed a though. lawsuit to open up her place when Tony Evers had his lockdown order. She said, nope, my place has to open up because, because. it's a ministry. She said there are spiritual references through the salon, and I share my faith with my customers, which is totally what they all want. Mm, I mean, technically, you and I share our faith together, but we oh, well, we don't cut each other's hair. I could yeah. cut your hair. Your hair is the it's longest long. I've ever seen it. Do you it's, have like these clippers? I thought about getting clippers, and I'm like, nope, not. It's only going to get worse. See, I'm just, I'm growing my hair because I had my hair pretty short when this started. I'm yeah. just growing out long enough. So I'm going to like do a whole reset. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm debating how long am I going to, I mean, should I, I don't do care. it like this? Is this really good hair for me? Yes. Actually, I'm into it. it. I like it. I uh, have worn my hair down in four months. And so <laughs> now when I let it down, it like just stays back. It just I lives back there. I'm bothering now. with mine. I'm just, I'll go outside for a walk or something. I'm like, eh, screw it. Not, I even... mean, it doesn't look bad. It's just the longest I've ever seen it's you just have long. your hair. Yeah, it's unruly. It's weird for me. I like um, it. I, I just say the. Into it. No. Like, like come the back. Second, like, the Mickey. second one of those places open, I'm going to be first in line. How about uh, when I drop off wine to you, I'll give you my kiss call. <laughs> I'm not going to use them. I'm afraid of what I'm going to do or let someone else. You do cannot me. fuck up having a guard on clippers. It's just no, like zhoom, don't zhoom. trust. Don't okay. trust. It. Okay. Uh, get your, when the get Wisconsin your to do it, he's probably has <laughs> coordination. He would totally do it. Uh, yeah. When the state Supreme Court in Wisconsin overturned Tony Evers stay at home order. I think her lawsuit basically became moot. So it's it gets to be open now um, and everyone can get hurt. So whatever. Um, I, I yeah. know I've go ahead. No, I'm go ahead. I was just gonna say I, I know I've talked about this before, but is this are you having the same thing as me of I'm becoming a weird libertarian during this of if people aren't gonna like even take the smallest steps to take care of themselves, like fuck all the way off. I, I, I want to be there, except with this virus, you can't say that. You can't say, well, I, you know what? Let their churches yeah. open because no, they're yeah. curing themselves. They're hurting other people. And if it wasn't that, maybe I would be more cruel about it. Here's the thing, Hammett, is you're right and I'm wrong because I am living in a place that every time some like 50 something lady on, on what's happening in Aurora or whatever garbage website I'm on is like, it's worse being afraid than it is to get the virus. I'm like, mm -hmm. cool, fine. Just fucking fine. Go out in the world, see how it treats you, and maybe you'll be fine, but I guess what? Other people around you won't. And I just, my empathy has mm -hmm. dried up, and I'm a deeply empathetic person to a point that, like, I have trouble watching TV and movies sometimes, but it's just impossible for me to see people who are given scientific back and be like, like, suck my right. dick, Fauci, like... <laughs> And just the way people are accusing hospitals around us for over-reporting COVID because they get more money. Like, it's just, uh -huh. I don't know how to do I, I gen, There's I a lot of know. bad I, science conspiracy theories. Remember there was a movie, I think it came out from Pure Flix last year. It was about the woman who goes to Planned Parenthood as like a volunteer. And then she's so disturbed by what she sees that she's now pro-life. You, you know what I'm talking about. I forgot the name of that movie. Thank Unforgivable you. or something like that. That doesn't um, matter. The, that's based off of a true story off of a woman who said, I was a volunteer to Planned Parenthood. Now I'm pro-life. Um, that person said this week, Abby Johnson maybe is her name, maybe. Uh, she said on Twitter this week something about like, you don't have to wear masks. They're stupid. And it's Gosh, just like, so brave. yeah, the 
quote unquote pro-life person just doesn't care who dies or doesn't care to be informed enough that I mean, she's but, just offering. But that's like what that we've seen. It's time and time again we see that that um right leaning people aren't actually concerned about fetuses. They're concerned about, I don't know, controlling women or controlling the economy or whatever. And it, it's it's fucking that I mean that's the thing is I I said something to uh, a pastor on Twitter today, something he, he said, Oh yeah. Uh, I to that. The, you talk. Something about the death penalty is good. Uh, a Nebraska governor said, we'll bring back the death penalty today. And so it's ironic because that governor says, so he's pro, he says he's pro life and he's like, yay, death penalty. We'll bring it back. This pastor said, whatever you want to kill babies. And I think my comment was, you're confusing a zygote with a baby or something. And he wrote back, zygote isn't a word. Some version of that. I'm not quoting him right. I but mean, I stared at that for a right, while. I'm like, he's that's, loud. that's your rea- Yeah, that's your re- reaction? Zygote's not oh, a word is how you respond? Then, All right. And then we saw on Twitter, I responded to that and said, tell this guy I need his kidney really bad. And then he can understand what consent is. Um, really, like if I walked up to this guy and said, I need your kidney to live. And he said no. And I died. Like, well, then now he understands that bodily consent is pretty fucking important, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I have two things yes, really quick. Yes, please. Um, so uh, RuPaul was on um, The Price is Right on Monday, this past Monday. Um, as a host? As a contestant? Um, made a special appearance. The Emmy did not play. Okay. But he didn't. But he did root for all the contestants yeah. because the show matched the value of the prizes with the donation to the charity of RuPaul's oh, choosing. Okay. Um, so the prize total was uh, $97,000. And guess what RuPaul decided that they wanted to uh, donate that to? Where did they donate it to? Planned Parenthood, <laughs> which is great. Like, so great. Um, but I just want to go through. Some people are, I don't want to shock you, Hemet. Anti Planned Parenthood. And now Anti Price is Right. And now Anti Price is Right and Anti uh, RuPaul, which I think the purchase people and the Anti RuPaul people is like a fucking circle. Yeah. Um, just a lot of watching tonight's episode, uh, giving away 70, uh, 97K to Planned Parenthood. You've got to be kidding me. You've lost a lifelong fan. Uh, Price is Right is saving money to abort babies tonight in Pride Time. All money goes... And they have, like, a picture, like, a generic picture of, like, multicultural babies. (laughs) I'm not wrong, but the Price is Right is a disgrace. They raised $97,000 for Planned Parenthood with their evening show tonight. How many lives will be lost because of this? They celebrate deaths. (laughs) Anyway, I do love getting people riled out about riled up about Planned Parenthood. How do you happy? How do you get angry at the prices right? God, you have to be 87 years old to be Genuinely they think the price is right donating Planned Parenthood is the, them like running in with two daggers and just like <laughs> pew, 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 pew. the like, price of this daggers. abortion without going over is right. <laughs> Um actually I someone bids there, a dollar and wins about- the Pulse Memorial thing. I don't want to talk about that because that's a strong bummer. So, um, want to end on a high note then? Yes. Please. Okay, I'll give you this one. Uh, I just saw a clip of this and I haven't even posted it yet, but it cracked me up. There is a preacher named Andrew Womack who is one of these guys you wouldn't have heard of him. He doesn't have a big profile, but he is big enough that he started his own Bible college in Colorado. It's called a Cherith Does that take a Charis- lot of what does that take? To money. Open a Bible it takes chunk? money. And he had a donor who was willing to do it. It's a weird story. But he opened it up in like 96 or something. It's been around for a while. It's Cheris Bible College in Colorado. And anyway, uh, today, as we're taping this, they had a virtual like campus days 2020. Like, do you have questions about the college? We'll answer your questions, which is something a lot of schools are doing. And I guess someone wrote in with a question, which... I sympathize with saying, can you fail Bible college? 
which is an interesting question because like, you know, some of these students are like, God told me to enroll in Bible school. And then if you fail out, what sort of mixed signal is that from God? God has other plans for you. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, someone must have wrote in, written in and said like, can you fail Bible college? And they had a few administrators and Andrew Womack on stage to answer questions. Mm -hmm. And here's what surprised me. Here's what I thought ahead of time they would say because it's what any college would say any college administrator would say which is yeah you can fail out but if you're struggling with your classes we have the following resources available to help you whether Mm -hmm. it's tutors a center professors you got to take advantage of it but we will give you as many resources because we don't want you to fail we want you to succeed that would be what like normal school yeah it's true for a lot of schools yeah Here's what they basically said. Um, I'm going to paraphrase first. They said like, yeah, you can fail technically, but you won't. And here's what they actually said. Here's Womack. Yes, you can fail, but it's going to be real hard. There was another guy who said the majority of... Is he carrying me? (laughs) I think he's like... Yeah, wink, wink. No, you won't fail. Come here. We'll give you a degree. Go to um, church and you get five <laughs> credits. Yeah. And I, there was another guy on stage who said the majority of tests are true, false, or multiple choice. And In a bragging I, way? Yeah. Like, and I'm sitting there like, if even if you're at a Bible college, you would think analyzing the Bible or talking about it would have something to do with your grade or at least something where the answer is not literally on the page and you just have to say yes or no. Not a coin flip. Yeah. Um, And also, what was the other thing? They, there were a few people who were just saying like, yeah, it's real hard to fail. If you go to a college where it seems harder to fail than it is to like get an A, you're not getting yeah, a not good great. education. That's I wrong. cracked up. I'll I'll post that by tomorrow, but it just made me laugh. I'm just like, I've never seen a college openly imply with big winks, like you won't fail. You get it, you get it, my dude. Yeah. The school is not accredited, by the way. They're you can get a degree from them. Say. It's as valuable. It's as valuable as toilet paper. But if you are looking to be a minister in the sort of churches that this guy preaches at, they don't care. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> give them your tuition money. Crack me up. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's all I got. All right, bud. Um, hey, where can we find you on the internet? I am at friendlyatheist.com. You can find me on Twitter at Hemant Meta. Come find me. I uh, dare you. Can you. Find me, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Blueberry, B-L-U-E-B-U-R-I-E. You can always email us if you have uh, thoughts or questions or concerns um, at friendlyatheistpodcast at gmail.com. Um, oh, oof, oof, oof. I have to read a five-star review. You, bam. Oh, yes. Do it. Um, we are going to be posting some bonus content soon. I'm hoping uh, this coming week, I'm going to be having a conversation with Jack Jenkins, who we mentioned earlier, who is the author of a new book on the religious left and what they are, what sort of power they might have if they're a good counterbalance to the religious right. He's been researching and reporting on that group for years. And I think Thing. I know I have a bunch of questions that I want to talk to him about. So we're going to hopefully tape that and we will release that as a bonus episode for anyone who is a Patreon donor and we'll release it on the main feed maybe a week or two after that. So if you want to get first dibs on that, Patreon this thing. Um, our five star review this week is uh, by Pork Chop Greasy 12. I like where this is going. <laughs> Uh, the only podcast I listen to religiously, Winky Face. It's not glitzy or polish. It's essentially a reality podcast. Hem and Jessica are real. Their analyses are refreshing and thought-provoking. The laughs are infectious. Uh, infectious, rather. I have literally woken my wife and dog on several Friday evenings laughing my ass <laughs> off. Friendly Atheist has helped me evolve into a more discerning and friendly skeptic. I love these two amazing people. Thank you Aww. so much. Thanks, Somebody else crap. said I... One of us used the F slur, which I don't think I did. Like, yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah, out of character for me. I don't know. Email, anyway, email us if you want to talk about that. Yes, please do. Um, guys, thank you. Uh, so if you are 
not yet uh, donating patreon.com slash young ladies podcast. My husband and I have gen- probably done eight between eight and 12 episodes of us watching movies and just like gabbing about it. And I cannot stress enough that this dumb podcast I did with my best friend and her boyfriend about lost season two was the hardest I've laughed in such a long time. It was such a joy. So if you just need like a break from everything that's going on, we had, it was just a lot of, and for me, I find that very, uh, I find it very soothing to listen to other people and their people who they also like. So I don't know. It, it, it helped me. It, it felt really good for me to record. Also, my husband and I just started a podcast called Cooper Duper. We're rewatching uh, uh, Twin Peaks. It's Mikey's favorite show. I have also seen it. Um, so it's meant for either people who have seen it a lot and want to talk about it or you just need something to watch and enjoy having sort of somebody talking you through it. Cause that's how I enjoy things of like when I was in, in lit in college of, I would maybe not like a book and then I would go to class and we discuss it. And I was like, Oh no. Okay. I, I get it. I get what's going on. So it's fun for us. I hope it's, it's fun for our listeners. Um, it's Cooper duper. And you can email us at Cooper duper pod. If you have thoughts. Um, All right. we'll talk to you next week. Is that it? All right. Bye. Bye.